Hi, I'm Doug Griggs from uh, the Flying Aces Club, DC Max Executors, and I run a uh, training squadron of middle schoolers called the Maryland Marauding Mustangs. Uh, recently, I had a, few, a bunch of my uh, fellow modeler friends ask how to make a nascent clutch on, uh, on the front end. So I'm going to try to show you how to do that, if you'll hang with me for a moment here. Okay, the tools we're going to need to do the nascent clutch is uh, obviously you're going to need a prop. Um, this is a six inch white prop. I believe it comes from an easy built. Um, I'm using a, a 132nd inch uh, prop shaft. This is a pre-bent one from uh, Peck Polymers, but you know any anything will do here. And one of the small uh, 132nd Polymers nose buttons. Uh, it should also have a, a washer and a uh, uh, probably a nylon uh, washer in there uh, in between the prop and the nose button but uh, that's for a final assembly thing we don't really need that for this exercise here the next thing you need is some drill bits um, I'm going to be using a 0.025 wire so I have chucked up in a, a pin vise a 0.025 uh, drill bit um, I'm also going to show you a trick uh, to use a piece of uh, standard 16th inch brass tube which has a 132nd ID so we'll use that as a kind of a bearing and so the idea with this is that the rubber motor can be pulling on this shaft and the prop will be able to spin free well we have to remount we drill out and remount the prop and to drill out the prop we have a 1 16th inch drill bit also in a pin vise and then one of the double secret magic tools is a little reamer I'm going to set uh, like this from uh, Micromark. It's a little pricey, but they're nice tools. It's about, I think it's about 25 bucks for this set. So yeah, that, that's expensive for uh, free fight model tools. Anyway, to get started, let's uh, first find the heavy blade on this prop because the uh, nascent clutch goes on one side. Okay, obviously this one is the heavy blade. So we want to put the nascent clutch on the other side. <clears throat> I'm going to make a little mark on this just to remind me. All right, next I'm going to drill out the prop uh, for the 1 16th inch brass tube. And that's that goes pretty easy. This plastic is soft, and if your drill bit's not garbage, it will uh, get through there in fairly short order. There we go, already through. And then I like to push it through from the other side here. Just for good measure. And now this prop ought to spin freely on the 1 16th brass. And if not, that's what the reamer is for. Sometimes it's just a matter of, all right, so that's not entirely free yet. Okay, yes it is. So that spins pretty well. It just has a rough spot on the tube. So the next thing to do is to cut this piece of brass tubing that will be uh, essentially the prop hub and that will take the thrust or the tension of the rubber motor. I'm going here. There Smoothing out that end a little bit so it'll go in more easily. There we go. All right. So we mark off the length of brass we need. You have the brass sticking out just the tiniest bit, about a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm going to mark that with a thumbnail on the length. And then the easiest way to cut is just to use a good old-fashioned number 11 blade. Pick it up right where my thumbnail was. And then just roll it back and forth. And it will cut through the tube. Takes a little force, but there it goes. Now that will close off the end of the tube a little bit. So I just have the reamer, hand reamer, chucked up in another um, pin vise. And just run that until you open up the end. Closer to open. Okay. Don't need to be 
should go from this other end. And one thing is you do have to be careful not to crush the tube with the pliers because um, this is the thicker wall tube if you're using the super thin wall stuff. The thicker wall tube is what's easy to find. It's a standard stuff. If you, you can order tubing that has a wall thickness that's about half the standard, which is very cool, but it's also much more fragile. So, all right. This is being a problem, so I'm going to run that drill bit through it first. The 025 drill bit. There we go. Now let's try again. Yeah, it felt like it went in. Okay, now we got the shaft running through and running free. So that'll go in the prop. You can see that it comes out the top a little bit, just by a sixteenth of an inch or so. And we have the heavy side marked. So now we take our O25 and pretty much as close to the uh, prop shaft as you think you can get away with. And you might have to actually start at a slightly different angle just to get the, uh, the bit started. And then rotate it so that it's perpendicular uh, to the prop shaft. Actually, it looks like that might be a little close. I'm going to try that. And then also uh, perpendicular to the shaft this direction and just away from the shaft this direction. Hopefully you don't actually get the hole going in to where the shaft will run, though you, you can work it so that it will work because <laughs> I've done that. Um, there we go. All right, so now you have a hole. I think you can see it. Just outside the prop shaft. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> and we will put the tube back up in there. Make sure we're, we're good. So now I have a piece of 025 wire. I'm going to cut off a little piece about inch, inch and a half long. It's, we're going to be cutting this off anyway. <clears throat> Through the little hole. Remember that the hole is on the heavy side of the prop. Okay, so that runs free. And let's make sure that the prop shaft runs free here. Um, All right, we might need to do a little cleaning up of that uh, brass tube. We might have messed that up a little bit with the um, pliers when we were working on it before. But it appears that we have no interference between the two, and the two look like they're moving pretty well together. Okay, so the next thing is with the wire eh, kind of halfway, a little, a, little bit, a little bit less than halfway. <clears throat> Take just a single set of pliers and give it a 90 degree bend. <clears throat> Actually, a little bit more than 90 degree doesn't hurt. There you go. You can see it laying on the, on the prop like that. And then actually, while this one is overlaying on the prop with a 90 degree bend, you are going to take it. You have to have a little bit of clearance so that the, uh, that the bale is free to move. Again, ask how I learned that lesson. And then bend this up 90 degrees or thereabouts. Okay, so now you have roughly a, a wire through the hub at roughly 90 degrees here. And the next thing is to 
bend the loops in it. And they, these can be, um, they, they don't have to be rounded loops. It kind of looks a little better if they're rounded, but there's no engineering reason why it has to do be that. Get it up about mm, a little over an eighth, maybe as much as a quarter. Uh, basically what has to happen is that the end of the bale has to be under there and uh, and be able to catch that uh, that piece of wire. So bend that over across the prop. And then on the other side, we do pretty much the same thing. And you can kind of, for, for reference, set it so that the other ear engages. See, I was engaged on the prop here so that it's not gonna bend. And then at kind of the same height over the prop, put another bend in across the prop. So now you have a Z or an S across the prop. And at this point, you can uh, put a wire in to check that it's going to work. A wire with kind of the same distance bend that you had in the other stuff. And uh, this is one not to skimp on. Again, it's easy to uh, get the the, the L bend on the end of the prop shaft too short to actually engage these these ears. So on the those button up here and put some tension on this. Okay. So in testing, I'm putting some ten back tension on the wire. The prop is free to free to spin while I'm I'm pulling on it. So this this uh, L is pretty tight. But the prop is actually spinning on the piece of brass tubing. So when you go the other direction, the prop engages, can you see that, on one of the ears. And then it ratchets and it engages positively and ratchets freely. I hope that shit helps. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, last step is then to uh, trim these ears off. They're a little long, obviously. And uh, don't trim these too short either. But uh, basically, a little bit wider than the prop should be enough. stand to be a little smaller. Alright, so there you go. There's the finished clutch.